Um, before you start listening to the lecture, um, go ahead and print off the handout that's the photos to accompany the video lecture on photo analysis. So you're holding a copy of these four photographs before you uh, move forward with listening to the talk. Um, in Sharon Miriam's textbook, she talks about the use of um, um, anecdotal data or artifacts. Uh, an artifact being some kind of nonverbal, non-spoken, non-measured, or non-written uh, narrative data, uh, using in fact things like objects, found objects, or in the case of this little talk, using photographs or digital images, uh, and reading the story that might be embedded in those pictures. And so, look at the handout. Um, I've provided you four photographs. Um, these are pictures that I um, took myself on the island of Curaçao in uh, the very southern Caribbean off the coast of Venezuela. Uh, and as we look at these four photographs, both taken from two different shopping districts on the island. One shopping district associated with one kind of group of people demographically, and the other set of pictures associated demographically with another kind of group of people. And so we want to read these photographs and see what we can know of the story that, um, that uh, is behind these pictures. Or we want to use these photographs to um, intuit or to perhaps hypothesize something about the culture of the people who live and who work and who shop in the areas associated with these images. Uh, so for example, uh, and you have four images there, um, what can you say about the architecture of these images? Looking at these four buildings that are depicted here, um, are, the, are, are two of them different? How, how in, in photos one and two versus photos three and four, uh, what's the difference in the architecture as you, as you look at it? How about physical beauty or attractiveness or modernity? Um, can you uh, consider that uh, a couple of these pictures uh, represent buildings that are um, designed and uh, a couple of these buildings uh, are not so much designed as they are simply used or found? Um, and what might that say about the culture or the social demographics of the people who might variously use these buildings uh, and the stores that are there? How about attractiveness? Uh, do, do two of these buildings um, connote a sense of attractive space for you, and two of them perhaps not so attractive? Uh, what are the elements of these images that connote attractiveness and planning and design and even artistic beauty as opposed to simple emergence in an environment? What do these images say to you about the wealth? the relative socioeconomic standing of the individuals that might work here. What story might you tell if you were to create fictional characters who inhabited and shopped at these various stores? Um, what demographic uh, identifiers would you associate with the people who are here and, and uh, shopping in these places? Who likely, if we could be blunt, who likely shops at stores like these? Wealthy people? Poor people? White people? Black people? People of color? Um, these, uh, these are, in fact, the kinds of things we can intuit uh, from images of street scenes in, uh, in shopping districts in places like there. If these pictures were mixed up, could you easily identify which two pictures go together and which pictures don't go together? Why doesn't photo one go with photo three or photo four? Uh, conversely, why would photo four not go with photos one and two? What is it that divides these images one from another. It, it's, it's these kinds of questions that we use to prompt or to query photographs like this. And this is how we use photos and digital images as raw data for storytelling in qualitative research. Uh, in my visit to the island of Curaçao, and I have included in your course content page a copy of, uh, of a manuscript that's being published next month uh, that looks at the island of Curaçao, and I, I think I used the Hillfiger picture in that paper. 
uh, you can see uh, how I use these kinds of images to tell the social cultural story of the people who live in Curacao. And it's this kind of uh, use of photographic images and photographic data that I'm wanting you to do in this module 7 in your course as it's set up right now. Uh, so I, I want you to uh, go ahead and, and look at a next set of images that I have included in another handout in this module. Um, and, and I want you to take that next set of images and come up with a set of key prompts and key questions that you might ask about these images. And then try to write a story that, that uh, in your mind, tells the story that the images are trying to convey. That's what qualitative researchers do when we take pictures of places that we are visiting and wanting to study. We try to take images that are telling stories which seem to be part of the landscape, the socio-cultural landscape. I photographed two different sets of stores in Curacao, a set of stores from the rich area where the white rich people shopped, the tourist industry shopping district, and a second set of stores um, that are associated with a shopping community where the, the uh, persons of color, the black people who are descendant from the African slave communities in that region. Uh, they, they live in great poverty. And, and the other pictures here, uh, the Maria store, Bonbini, um, these are stores uh, where the poor people shop, where, where nearly all the black people shop on that island. There is a gross and hard line uh, that is associated both to wealth and poverty, whiteness and color uh, in the island of Curacao. And it's these kinds of pictures that tell those stories. See what you can do telling the story from these other images that I've put on there for you. And then this technique of capturing images and using the images to tell a story, we're going to use in the last module where you go out and get some images that tell the story of your life, of your social story, and use those images to tell me a story in the same kind of qualitative analysis.